Hi everyone, in this video we will learn the concept of pulse width modulation or PWM in the Embed LPC1768 microcontroller. The Embed microcontroller has 6 hardware PWM output which is from pin P21 to P26. So this is the Embed microcontroller and these are the uh, PWM output pin from P21 to P26. The pulse width modulation or PWM is simply a square wave signal or pulse signal like this. And it is used to control other electronic or electrical devices such as the LED to control the brightness or the speed of the DC motor or the position of the servo motor. There are two important parameters that we need to know for the PWM. The first one is the period. G, and the second one is the duty cycle, which is the time high or on or time for logic 1 divided by the period of the PWM signal. And most of the time it is expressed in in percentage. However, in most microcontroller, the duty cycle is expressed in terms of time. For example, in the embed microcontroller, the duty cycle is represented by the time high. So if the time high is 0 0.5 second, then the duty cycle is 50%. When the time high is, for example, 0 0.7 second, then the duty cycle is 70%. So we use the width of the PWM signal to control these electronic devices. So for example, if we increase the width of the PWM signal, we will increase the brightness of the LED. Also, if we increase the width of the PWM signal, we will increase the speed of the DC motor. And if we reduce the width of the PWM signal, we will reduce the brightness of the LED or the speed of the DC motor. To use the PWM signal on the embed microcontroller, we need to use the PWM function as provided by the embed. So this is how uh, we write the program to create the PWM signal on the embed microcontroller. So we use the function PWM out and name our PWM signal as PWM1 and it is assigned at pin P21 of the embed microcontroller. And this is how we um, set the period of the PWM signal so that our name PWM signal name PWM1 dot period and uh, if we use dot period means that the value inside this is in second so 0 0.010 second is equivalent to 10 millisecond and uh, here PWM1 equal to 0 0.5 is to set the duty cycle to 50%. So the duty cycle for embed is normalized to value between 0 to 1. 0 means 0% and 1 means 100% duty cycle. We can also write like this for defining the uh, duty cycle. Use PWM1, the name dot write 0 0.5. Or we can use in time domain, which is pulse width underscore ms5. So ms is 
uh, microsecond and the value here is 5 microsecond and for the period also we can use period underscore ms means that the value inside the bracket is in millisecond in this case is 10 millisecond so this program will create the pw signal with a period of 10 millisecond and because the duty cycle is 50 percent means that the time high here is 5 millisecond and now look at the actual output uh, on the oscilloscope before that we need to write the program for the pwm on the embed compiler so we name it as simple pwm We have our program here and compile the program. Save and let's see the output on the oscilloscope. Okay, so this is our PWM signal. Let's make it smaller so that we can measure the width of the PWM signal. So the width is 5 millisecond. And the period is 10 millisecond. So this is Digilin Electronic Oscilloscope where you can connect this oscilloscope to the PC to see the output on the PC. And this is the setup where PW output is at P21 connect to the scope uh, at channel 1 and you can view the output on the computer screen. Okay, now let's look at the second example where now we want to vary the duty cycle of the PWM signal. Again, our PWM signal is named as PWM1 at pin P21. And now we have one variable, I. And our period is still 10 millisecond. And this is the endless loop the while one loop all right so inside the while one loop we have two for loop where i is start from zero and while i is less than one we increase i by 0 0.02 and i is assigned to pwm means that i is actually the duty cycle and it is vary from zero to 0 0.98 which is almost one. So we increase the duty cycle from zero to one here. Uh, and uh, we have the delay routine. So every 0 0.2 second, we will increase the duty cycle for this loop. And after we exit this for loop, now we try to decrease the duty cycle by the factor of 0 0.2 uh, by the factor of 0 0.02 and after we exit this for loop we will go back and do this again so what we will do is here we increase the duty cycle from 0 to 1 and after we exit from this loop we will decrease the duty cycle from 1 to 0 0 to 1 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0 endlessly so what we have is something like this so this is the first for loop where we increase the duty cycle from 0 to 1 and now the second for loop from 
one, two, zero. Right, we increase. And we decrease. Now let's simulate the application of the PWM by using the embed simulator. We will use the PWM to control the brightness of the LED and we will use the same program that we have here by increasing the duty cycle of the PWM and here is decreasing the duty cycle of the PWM. So we add the LED at pin P21. And run the program. Okay, we can see that the brightness of the LED is the Increasing and increasing gradually according to our program. So when we look at the PWM signal, we can see that when the duty cycle is maximum, the brightness of the LED is maximum. And when the duty cycle is minimum, the brightness of the LED is minimum. Next, we will look at the Another application of the PWM signal, which is to control the position of the servo motor. A servo is a small rotary position control device, often used in radio control car and aircraft to control the angular position of variables such as steering, elevators, and rudders. So the position of the servo motor can be like this, 0 degree, 90 degrees, 180 degrees and back to 0 degrees or 360 degrees. So the position is controlled by the duty cycle of the PWM signal. For example, this one uh, to have 0 degrees. So the duty cycle must be 1.25 millisecond. And we want to increase to 90 degrees. So we increase the PWM duty cycle to 1.5 millisecond. And for 180 degrees is 1.75 millisecond and we need to have the period of 20 millisecond for this uh, servo motor and this is how we connect the servo motor to the embed microcontroller through pin 22 in this case and uh, this is connected to the PWM signal in at the servo motor and the servo motor also receive the power from the external power source another one is to control the speed of the DC motor and this is how we connect the DC motor to the uh, embed microcontroller so we cannot connect the motor directly to the microcontroller because the motor need higher current as compared to the microcontroller so microcontroller cannot provide that high current to the motor so we have the what we call the motor driver here to supply just enough current to the motor here so in this case we use the uh, H bridge uh, motor driver L293D and the connection is this the PWM from the microcontroller here and uh, P7 and P6 is digital output connected to uh, pin 1A and pin 2A. This is to control the right direction of the motor. So when 1A is 1 and 2A is 0, the motor will uh, run clockwise. And if 1A is 0, 2A is 1, the motor will run anti-clockwise. And if both are 0, 0 or 1, 1, the motor will uh, stop running. And this motor driver is connected to the external power supply, whether uh, 12 volt or 5 volt. Alright, so the speed of the motor is controlled by the duty cycle of our PWM signal. 
Alright, this is how we use the microcontroller to produce the PWM signal to control the electronic devices. Okay, so this is the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. See you in the next video. Goodbye.